Here are some fun facts about famous cars from some popular movies. Living life one quarter mile at a time, first we have the 1970 Dodge Charger. This was the car Dom Toretto uses in the Fast and the Furious movies. When they started to work on the first film, they realized these cars had become rare. When the studio was able to find some, they usually required a lot of work. They had a total of six chargers for the first film, one of which was constructed with a blown 528 cubic inch Hemi V8. Three others used LS3 GM crate engines, and one was only used for close-ups with green screens. According to Dom, the car holds an impressive 900 horsepower, has rear-wheel drive, and can go a quarter mile in nine seconds flat. In order to pull off the wheelie scene in the first film's climax, they had to use a hydraulic ram. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. Next, we have the 1961 Ferrari 250 GT California featured in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. The original script of Ferris Bueller's Day Off did not have a Ferrari at all. It was originally meant to be a Mercedes AMG. The film's director, John Hughes, saw the Modena Spider designed from a Ferrari in a magazine and decided he wanted a closer look at it. Once he did, he went with the Spider. A total of three different Spiders were ordered for the film. The contracted car makers were tasked with building all three car replicas in four weeks. When it came to the closer detailed shots in the movie, however, they used a real Ferrari. There was a slight problem though. Matthew Broderick, who played Ferris, didn't know how to drive a stick shift. To fix this, the crew had to fit a replica with an automatic transmission so he was able to drive it. Alan Ruck, who played Cameron, has been quoted saying that the car was universally hated by the crew because it didn't work right. You might remember the scene in the movie where Ferris hands over the keys to the valet workers, only to have them take it for a joyride moments later. That part had to be shot over a dozen times because the car would refuse to start. Another famous scene a little further into the film holds another secret. When the valet workers launch the car off a jump over a camera in slow motion to the Star Wars theme, how many tries do you think that took? Nine times. Nine times. By the time they got the shot correctly, the exhaust was smashed and both front suspension bolts were shattered. The Modena driven in most of the scenes went back to the original designers who worked for 10 years restoring it. He left a single dent in the grill to pay homage to the movie. Remember the Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters? What exactly was it? A hearse? An ambulance? Turns out it's both. It started in 1954. A.J. Miller Company, who made hearses and ambulances, was in direct competition with Meteor Motor Car, who made limousines and ambulances. Wayne Corporation, not Batman, was an Indiana company who made buses. Wayne purchased Meteor and two years later also bought out Miller. They aligned the former competitors, and by 1957, they were working together. Two years later, the Ecto-1 was created. Only about 400 of these cars were made. The script had called for a 1975 Cadillac ambulance, but had settled on the 1959 model in the end. The vehicle was originally going to be a lot darker. Dan Aykroyd described the Ecto-1 as black with purple and white strobe lights, giving it an ethereal purple glow. Originally, it was going to be given the power to dematerialize as well as travel to other dimensions. A cinematographer pointed out that most of the shots were at night, so they decided against the dark paint. The Ecto-1, Gigameter, Ghost Trap, Particle Thrower, Proton Pack, and Slime Blower were all designed by Stephen Dane, all within two weeks of the start of shooting. Stephen's name was misspelled in the end credits and was only labeled as a hardware consultant. Two Miller Meteors were bought for use in Ghostbusters. One was used for most of what you see in the film. The second was used for early pre-modification scenes. There were some issues with the Ecto-1. For promotion purposes, after the movie was released, one of the Ghostbusters drove the vehicle in costume around New York. It caused several accidents as people were watching the car more than the road. While shooting Ghostbusters 2, the Ecto-1 actually broke down while filming on the Brooklyn Bridge. The smoke and noise you hear in the movie were actually real. The car was not doing great. The breakdown on the bridge caused such a big traffic jam that the NYPD fined the production. Next up, we have the 1981 DeLorean DMC-12 from Back to the Future. 
The first DeLorean was constructed back in January 1981. Roughly 9,000 were made before they stopped all production in 1983, only two years later. There was a Christmas promotion held in 1980 for American Express Gold Card members, where they supposedly built 100 DeLoreans and painted them gold. They cost $85,000 each. Ultimately, they only sold four. Luckily for them, they hadn't even built the 100 they promised for the promotion. The official 0 to 60 mile per hour time for the DMC-12 was 8.8 .8 seconds. The 12 in the name originally came from the fact that it was priced at $12,000, but by the time it came to market, it had doubled in price. The idea for the look of Doc Brown's time machine was that he built it with scrap parts in his garage. They didn't want it to look too perfect, it had to look like it might blow up. The vents on the back of the car were originally going to be part of a nuclear reactor. But once they decided they wanted the car to fly, they were used for the propulsion system instead. Here's a fun movie secret you might not have known. Remember how the car is smoking after it gets to the Twin Pines Mall at the start of the movie? They actually poured liquid nitrogen on the car to make that effect. Last, we have the 1964 Aston Martin DB5 from Goldfinger. The DB series was named in honor of Sir David Brown, who owned Aston Martin for 25 years. The DB5 released in 1964 as a luxury car with standard equipment including two doors, twin fuel tanks, an oil cooler, electric windows, leather trim interior, wool carpets, and even a fire extinguisher. 1,059 of the DB5s were produced during the two years it was manufactured. The 1964 Aston Martin DB5 is considered to be the most recognizable James Bond car after it appeared in the film Goldfinger. As a movie promotion event, two DB5s were even proclaimed the most famous car in the world and shown at the 1964 New York World's Fair. After the success of Goldfinger, the DB5 was considered to be the primary James Bond vehicle for the franchise. Various models have been featured in seven of the films, including two of the latest, Skyfall and Spectre. In addition to the movies, the DB5 has also been in many Bond video games. One game featuring this car is From Russia With Love, which was based on the movie of the same name released in 1963. I hope you enjoyed a behind-the-scenes look at some of the most famous cars in movies.